What's going on Project RE? So today we're actually at one of our development sites. I know everyone knows me as the flipper guy, but I also have a partner that handles the development site, Limelight Development. Um, as investors, we're always looking to increase ourselves and increase how we can revenize the real estate space. Um, it's important that you don't stay in your box and just do one thing. As you master that thing, start looking to scale. So as we got really good at flipping homes about 15, 16 years ago, the next logical step was to start building them as well. Back then, we were getting houses, we could flip the house, and then we'd carve a lot off and we'd get a free lot because the market was a lot different then. My business partner, Will Heaton, then at the time goes, hey, let's start building things as well. He then learned that developing is actually easier in some way, shape, or forms than flipping. Quit the flipping game, I took that over, now he's running the development. But so why do we do that as investors? Well, the A is we like to hedge and be in multiple different types of market. We flip properties, we wholesale properties, we develop them, we lend money, we're brokers that give services. These multiple streams will help you work through any type of market condition. But now that I kind of went over on my little rant about why to balance out, let's talk about the math behind this and why it can be beneficial for you as a flipper. As a flipper, start looking at sharpening your, your, your skill set, start learning to develop, you can make a lot more money per project. Um, so in your typical flip, you gotta source that property, renovate it for nine months, sell it, and you get profit on one deal. With this development project, we're getting paid on eight different sales. And so the sheer volume is condensed to one site and the profit margins are a lot bigger. It requires more cash, and it, it requires a little bit more staff to really run this correctly, but, the profit margins are there so they can absorb all those things. So that's the hard part about scaling your flipping business. It's, you, you only have so much profit so you only can hire so much. With development, the profit's a lot bigger so you can systemize the staff better. But let's give you a quick rundown on this project. It's a really cool site. We, uh, we were sold to it. Uh, we were actually sold to it by a company just like us that sells dirt. It was already planned and permitted, so we decided to make a move. So let's break down the math real quick. We paid $2.2 .2 million for the land. We are building eight different townhomes on this site, and we're going to exit at 7.2 to 7.4 with a combined value. After all said and done, we're looking at making four or $500,000 on this single site. That's a huge return. Um, and so what it does is it allows us to kind of work smart and go through it. But if you want to make that step to moving into developing, you want to start building out different teams. Every person that works on this site does not work on our fix and flip. So it's about building the right teams and managing them correctly. So if you want to get into development, you need to build a separate team. Uh, the first person that you need to hire is a lawyer. Always a lawyer. You got to set up the business correctly. From there, as a new uh, builder or developer, there's two ways you can go. Either you can self-manage and build the unit yourself, that's a lot more complex, or if you're a new flipper that's getting into building, it makes more sense to pay more and hire a builder. They're gonna walk you through those plans. So start working with hiring a builder first if it's your first step. The next people you need on your team is an architect the next person you need on your team is an architect. You need to be able to permit the job site. They gotta go in, see what you can do. They're gonna be able to help you with your underwriting as you're looking at your next potential dirt play. They're gonna tell you what can be built there. What's the potential of it? They know different codes and they know how to kind of move around to create the ultimate site map. Many times when you're looking at dirt, is not just about the price, it's about how much lot coverage you can get, how many units can be produced, and what's the maximum value of this property by total buildable square footage. That's what your architects can help you do. In addition to, they're gonna hand you your permitting, your design to make sure it looks good. In addition to, you need to build out your other team, but your architect can help you. They're gonna be able to get you a structural engineer, a civil engineer, a geotech, to go through that feasibility and work through the permitting and the plans. Um, so to build out your team first, you wanna make sure that you have the really good architect and engineering team. That's gonna make a big difference on whether you can execute your plan. So again, the architect's gonna help you with your feasibility, figure out your maximum lot coverage to what your po total potential value is, but then they also need to value engineer it. You need to work with the right architects. Not every architect is the same. Some architects are gonna design you the coolest pad. Problem with the coolest pad, it's gonna cost more to build it. So for us as builders, we want a really cool design, but we want it to be value engineered. We want not too many windows, not too big of windows. We wanna stick with standard items that we can keep our costs down. Once you start going outside standard, your costs can balloon. 
So after you get your builder, your architect, your lawyer, the next thing you need to get is your lender, a construction lender. Many times when you're buying dirt, you wanna kind of structure it for two different ways. A, where you buy the dirt, you wait for the permits, and then you get your construction loan set or you can negotiate with the seller and wait for the permits to be issued and then close. The construction lender in your construction financing for a typical site like this, they're gonna finance you 80% of the total cost. So let's say we're buying this lot for 200 grand and we gotta put 800,000 in to build. We would have to come in as builders for $200,000 and the bank is gonna finance us back the 800,000 on draws to build and complete the project. The best way to source that money is actually from your local bank. Local or credit unions usually understand the market, they understand business banking. We actually get every one of our development loans from local banks and not hard money lenders. Once you've built your core team, then go out and find brokers that specialize on sourcing dirt. They understand it better. They know what lot coverage is. They can underwrite the properties a lot better for you and keep you busy with steady deal flow. So check out companies like Heat and Dana Real Estate. We source over 150 lots a year and it's one of our specialties. So we get our clients the volume where as many brokers can't. Work with the right team. And if you work with the right team, you can put the whole package together. So remember again, Find your attorney, get your business set up, source a builder so you can watch the process go on. You're gonna pay a little bit more, but it's a good way to start. Get your architect team, they're gonna come with their structural engineers, their geotechs, and their civil engineers, and then find a broker that can source you that good deal and they understand what you're trying to do. Not all brokers are the same.